Well, g'day everyone, welcome back to the channel. Ali's just inside the van at the moment. She's done a little bit of work. I'm gonna drag her out of there in a second because this week we're in Newcastle and it's time to get out and explore. So why don't you go and get yourself a cold drink, get your feet up for the next 20 minutes or so. Come and join us for the adventure. Hi, I'm Steve. And I'm Alison. We decided a couple of years ago that we'd work hard and save all of our money and start living life on our own terms. So we bought a caravan and hit the road on a trip for two all around Australia. So why not come and join us every week for our adventures? G'day everyone, welcome back to the channel. We've got a brand new episode for you this week. Um, we found ourselves in Newcastle, and I'm going to show all around Newcastle very soon. We're going to start this episode a little bit differently, because this week, a bloody starling died. Um, we were up in Coopernook, as you know, a couple of weeks ago, and I was running the starling out of the car, and the inverter in the car started to beep, and I thought I just overloaded the inverter. So I unplugged everything, come and plugged it into the caravan, and everything was perfectly fine. And then the next day, it started to beep again. So I checked the codes for our inverter and it said that there was a short or an overload in the system. We turned everything off, couldn't work it out. Then I went to turn the Starlink back on and there was a pop sound and then just the smell of burning. So I think what's happened is the Starlink router has absolutely crapped itself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw in a warranty claim to Starlink and throughout today's episode, I'll keep you up to date, let you know how we get on. But in the meantime, sit back and enjoy the episode. One of the things I really enjoy doing when we travel is just taking turns and we we're coming down the Pacific Highway um, heading in towards Swansea and we saw a sign to Catherine Hill Bay and we thought oh let's go down and check it out and when we come down what a beautiful place. What do you reckon now? It's it's quite picturesque actually it's nothing um, it wasn't what I expected to be honest. Not at all and it's an old historic town so when you drive through the town there's lots of old workers cottages um, that were put here originally for the miners who worked in the area. Yes, yeah. Which leads me on to the big jetty here that's behind us. That's actually an old railway line where they used to run the coal out to. I think um, there was a coal mining coming out here for a bit, mm. company for about oh, 100 years maybe? Mm, definitely back into the 1800s. It was something like that. And the other thing I recognise when we come down is uh, one of my mother's friends lives here or lived here. Yes. Um, yeah, we used to come here to the Cathay pub and go and have lunch and do those sorts of things. Unfortunately, it's a little bit early in the morning at the moment, we can't get out there. But what we can do is take you for a bit of a walk along the beach and show you what this beautiful hidden gem has to offer just a little bit south of Swansea. Yep, yeah, just another beautiful beach on the New South Wales coach that uh, you can stop and enjoy. Oh, this one's definitely in my top 10. Definitely in my top 10. Anyway, let's go and have a look around. Okay, so if you come down to Catherine Hill Bay, it's a great beach, there's plenty of space to move around on out here. Um, it's a patrolled beach, so there's Surf Lifesavers, there's actually a Surf Lifesavers clubhouse here. Plenty of people in for a swim this morning, even though the water's a little bit too cool for us. That's probably because we've still got a bit of Queensland blood going. But plenty of people out here surfing, and just comes around into this beautiful bay. There's plenty of rock pools to check out, or as we've said a thousand times before, a walk along the beach in the morning is good for the soul, isn't it? Yeah. It's wonderful. It's oh. uh, definitely a great way to start the day. It is. Anyway, we're going to enjoy our walk and we'll catch up with you when we get into Newcastle. Just making our way around to Nobby's. We're going to go down there, check out Fort Scratchley, and probably um, have a bit of lunch down in Newcastle there somewhere, but couldn't go any further without showing you Mary Worth the Beach. It's a great drive. We're just on the tourist drive. Brings you down through all the beautiful homes that you see up in the hills. They look all out over Newcastle. Then you drive up along this beautiful beachfront. We 
made our way to Nobby's Beach. This is a great little spot down here if you come into Newcastle. Um, just before you come out in the beach, there's plenty of grassed areas you can come and have a barbecue, a picnic, lots of play areas here for kids, there's basketball courts. It's just a beautiful place to come and see. And it all sits in the shadow of um, Port Scratchley. It is, it is. Which we're going to walk up the hill very soon and go and have a look. But anyway, I'll take you out the beach, give you a bit of a look around. We've come down to Nobby's Beach. What a beautiful place to come and visit when you come and see Newcastle. The water today is absolutely crystal clear, isn't it, Al? Oh, yes, it is. It's it is. a beautiful sunny day. And there's a bit of something here for everybody. So just what I'm having a look now, it's a great area. You can bring your kids down, have a bit of a swim safely. All of this is, well, it's a patrolled beach. You can see over here, there's the flags. Um, plenty of people out surfing all the way down there to the point. Great place to come and stay. But if you've never been to Nobby's Beach before and you weren't sure, this is where the Pasha Balka washed up in 2007. Yes, it is. It's, yeah. uh, it's, uh, it feels like yesterday. Yes, it does. But I'll <laughs> throw a photo in to show you what it looked like at the time if you're not familiar. But just here, there's a small sculpture, which is a monument to that event. Come down to Nobby's Beach, you can go for a walk along Macquarie Pier. It's a great little walk, isn't it? Al? It's quite lovely, actually. It is. It takes you out to a place that's called Nobby's Island, but Nobby's Island is now part of the mainland. But when they first built it back in about 1818, um, the pier was to link out there. They used to run a railway line along here, but today it's just a great walk. Lots of people out jogging and riding their bikes and stuff. It's good, isn't it? It is wonderful. It's uh, a beautiful sunny day to enjoy um, the reclaimed area, I think, for this part of the world. It is and apparently there's supposed to be a foundation stone out here or near enough to the foundation where they think that the um, the convicts started or laid the first stone. Um, we'll see if we can find it. There was no real signs to say where it was, just a picture of it. So anyway, we'll see what we find. So the good thing about um, the information boards, they have the, the QR codes which you can scan and get some uh, more information or uh, like it went to YouTube and actually showed a video of the area. Oh, okay. It's pretty good. <laughs> it is, it is, yeah, it's certainly a better way to do a tour than just try and blindly find it for yourself. Yes. Definitely. Gonna take a walk out onto the breakwater, and I don't know if you can see this over my right shoulder here, but what a beautiful headland when you walk out here and out. Oh, look at the dolphins! So, just straight out here, oh, look, there are eh? the fingers just popped up. Let's pull in over here. There's a couple of dolphins swimming out of the harbour, they great. Well, how cool is that? Sorry about that, we just got, we saw some dolphins, we had to stop and go and just check them out. We'll throw in a bit of footage if I can get them, because they're pretty quick. Although they are at the end of the pier at the moment, aren't they? They are. Yeah, or the um, seawall break. So we'll go out and have a look out here, but it's really nice walk. It's a nice day for today, isn't it? It's a beautiful day. It is, and there's some something out here at the end, I don't know what it is, but we'll show you when we get there. The other thing you can see from here is the sand dunes of Stockton which is always a beautiful thing to come and see, unless you're in the army in the 80s and you come out here and uh, they used to run you all over them like a madman. But other than that, great place to come and visit. So the structure that I thought was at the end of the bridge was in fact only the seaway marker, but nevertheless, still worth walking out and having a look. What do you reckon the total walk was, Al? Uh, two k's? Yeah, it's about 2 k's out here to the end, I'd say, and obviously 2 k's back, it's so about 4 k turnaround. Probably took us, what, 20 minutes to walk out here, 20 minutes to half an hour. We stopped and took a lot of photos, a bit of filming. And we read, like, there's got the information boards as you're walking along as well, so we stopped and had a look at those and read those. Yeah, they did, yeah. They, they, we don't mind that, they give you plenty of information, and mm. we found signs that you can actually read. <laughs> that was really good. <laughs> that was good. All right. <laughs> We see hundreds and hundreds of dedications put to rocks, generally people who've scattered ashes, I think, and they come out and put a dedication to someone. But we've come all the way to the end of the seawall here in Newcastle to find a dedication to Captain Donald McRae, who was in the Royal, I say RN, I'm thinking Royal Navy maybe, but he was the beach master for the Gallipoli evacuation in 1915. That was certainly something we didn't think we'd see out here, but very interesting nonetheless. So 
something else that was interesting to learn when you come for a walk out along the pier was it shows the areas in Newcastle that were shelled. So I'll just show around here during the war, a Japanese submarine coming close to shore and it tried to fire um, upon the town because of its fuel and coal resources. But from Fort Scratchley, which is just up over there behind us, they fired four shots in the direction of the submarine and after that no more shots were fired from the sub. So whether they sunk or not, that's who knows, but uh, it did stop it, but the damage was minimal and there was no casualties suffered on the night. All right, final thoughts on the walk out on the Macquarie Pier, which leads you onto the seawater wall. Yeah, what do you it reckon? Was, it was quite an easy walk, to be honest. Um, lots of boards to stop and read and um, you know, observe in the area that you're in. It was quite good. It is, and it's a beautiful walk. And when you get out onto the seawall, you've got the ocean boat side you, which is absolutely stunning. Mm -hmm. And as we showed you before, we saw a couple of dolphins. But the view back to Nobby's, and I'll quickly flip the camera around now and show you. Check that out. That makes it well worth it. So, easy walk. You might want to do it earlier in the morning or later in the afternoon. We're about maybe two o'clock in the afternoon now. It's not too bad, but bring some water with you because there's nothing out here. No, no. And uh, no toilet, so you might want to do that before you come out here as well. Um, but other than that, if you're in Newcastle and you are lost for things to do or you want to do something that costs you nothing but you'll get a thousand percent repayment for, come and do this walk because you'll love it. Yes, you will. <laughs> Rightio. Thought I'd quickly jump into the video right here and give you an update on our Starlink. I had to make a warranty claim, which I've done through the app. There's no contact number for Starlink, so you can only go through your account, through the app, or through their online service, and then you go ahead and make your claim. And all you do is you provide a description of exactly what went wrong and some photographs. And I'll just cut in some of the stuff that I put in here. Um, and then you just wait for them to respond. Now, for us, it took about four to five days before we got a response, but when we did, I've got to say, their customer service was first rate for us, in our experience anyway. Um, the team dealt with it instantly. Um, they immediately identified, yep, that was gonna be a problem, and they're replacing all of the Starlink, which we're really, really happy about. So we've got to wait till we get the new one, then we'll box the old one up, send it back to the States. But anyway, I'll let you know how it finishes up. Well, here we are at Fort Scratchley. Let's go for a look around. Well, any trip to Newcastle would not be complete if you didn't go up to the top of the hill and check out Fort Scratchley. It's pretty easy to find. It's at the end of Nobby's Beach. You won't miss it. It's a great look back in our past, and particularly the reason why they built it. It was originally built in 1882 to ward off a postal invasion by the Russians of all people. Anyway, when you go to the top of the hill, you get plenty of great views. And if you've never seen a cannon fire before, every day at one o'clock, they fire the cannon. The other thing when you're around there is you'll learn a lot of history about the only time that it was used, and that was during World War II when a Japanese submarine fired upon Newcastle and Fort Scratchley returned fire. I think they fired about four shots or so. I'm pretty sure that's what I read anyway. Um, and the Japanese sub wasn't heard for after that. But it's a great day out. It's a great look back on our history. So why not when you come to Newcastle, head on up to Fort Scratchley, maybe even take the tour. When we come to the top of the hill, you get a beautiful view back up along Nobby's Beach. And you can see right out there where the ship is, that's the seawall that we walked out to the end of. It's a great walk. This is the laundry building here at Fort Scratchley. Um, nothing out of the ordinary for its time, but one thing Alice and I were just laughing about, what's special about these laundry tubs here, Al? They're in my laundry at home. They are, oh, these are the exact same ones that we have at home. The reason they're probably still there is because no one can lift them. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I think my mum had similar ones as well, uh, and we gave them to one of our neighbours. Yeah, they weigh a tonne. We've even got that same stand sitting underneath them. So. One of the things that we really enjoyed while we are at Fort Scratchley was just walking through the display rooms. They're just all made up inside of old rooms that were used when the fort was active, but they show lots of old weapons. They talk about what day-to-day -day life was like if you lived at the fort, lots of photos and memorabilia of those years. They speak about the servicemen and women and the roles that both played in the operation of the fort. 
One thing that I found particularly interesting while we're at the fort was the old barrack buildings that the soldiers lived in, which can be rented out as function rooms today. If you have two metre drink when you're on the function, there's a special room just here for you. Well, today we've come over to the other side of the harbour here in Newcastle to Stockton. It's quite a beautiful place, isn't it? It is quite lovely, yes. Yeah, it's great for some walks and things. I'll just give you a bit of a quick look around. So here around us at the moment, we're just walking through some parklands. But this was an old colliery back in the day. So this was uh, a port where they they bought coal down and put it onto ships and they done all those sorts of things. And you couldn't tell, could you? No. In fact, we wouldn't have known unless we read a sign that just told us that that's what it used to be in the past. The reclamation of the ground's been really really good i reckon i think it's a great way to uh, reclaim the area and use it definitely and they made some great public um places there's plenty of people out fishing people just sitting here watching all the ships and things come into the harbour it's a great day out and it's easter sunday it is it's uh, it's a wonderful afternoon one of the things i'm really enjoying about newcastle particularly our walk along um stockton today is that you get that view of the of the cityscape and i don't know whether it's because of the earthquakes or not but there's no tall buildings here in Newcastle, but you get to see, you can see amongst the buildings, all of the old buildings. It's really good to come and have a look at. If you decide you want to come over to Stockton for the day and take advantage of the beautiful park lands, kids plays areas, what else is here? Barbecues, picnic tables, toilets. It's got everything. It has got everything. And you feel like, I can hear a lot of music coming from Newcastle over there. I'm gonna slip over and see what's going on. You can jump onto the ferry. It takes you straight across. Well, you like a five minute ride I reckon, you've got plenty of parking over here and you don't have the hustle and bustle of Newcastle. We've arrived at DHL in Morissette, as we've told you before we're staying up in Newcastle and our bloody Starlink crapped itself in there. At the most inappropriate time. It did, but as we did say before, Starlink were bloody fantastic with this, once we put in the warranty clay. Everything was done really, really quick, wasn't it? Yeah, it was pretty good, actually. The only problem that we really had was that we've had to come all the way down to Morissette from Newcastle, even though there are some closer um, areas around Newcastle for DHL, but they only deal in satchel freight where you're picking up. This is actually one of their, their drop-off depots, but it's better than going down to Sydney. I think the other part was um, when you were speaking to the Starlink person, and it was not via the um, app, he said uh, Australia Post, so and uh, not DHL, so it threw us a little... It did, yes, because we did go to Australia Post the other day. And Steve it. didn't read the email. <laughs> no, I didn't. Pays to read the emails, people. <laughs> All right, anyway, bottom line, we have a brand new Starlink and this one's going back to the United States. Sounds good. Well, that's it for this week's episode. Ali and I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please hit the like button. If you're not already subscribed to our channel, please consider subscribing because it really does help our channel grow. And if you've got any questions or you'd like to make a comment on anything you saw in today's video, Please drop it in and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Why don't you come and join us next week? We go to the Hunter Valley and taste a few chocolates, a little bit of cheese, and of course a lot of wine. We'll see you next Saturday at 9 o'clock. Have a great week. See you then. Bye bye. Here's something I never knew they had in Newcastle trams. What bloody rock have I been living under? Considering we drove over them before, I'm not sure. <laughs>